Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you subscribe. And happy Halloween all around. Before we get to it, I compare and contrast movies and shows to the books and the video games they come from, sometimes vice versa, all three, ETC. If that is a topic that piques your interest, please subscribe and ring the notification bell to catch all my weekly uploads. Now for today, in the spirit of Halloween and the most overused and versatile horror subgenres, we're going straight to the source. Bram Stoker's Dracula, the original vampire that blazed the trail for every vampire horror film and black comedy and miniseries like Vampire Diaries, Twilight, Dark Shadows, and True Blood, and even sci-fis like Blade. And when it comes to overused, when you go out to your Halloween parties and trick-or-treating, I challenge you to find fewer vampire costumes than you can count on both hands. And by versatile, I mean whatever outfit you want, you want to cobble together, just add costume fangs and Bob's your uncle. But enough about that. Time for Bram Stoker's Dracula. And I'm going with the 1992 adaptation, which is the most recent. It's dark, disturbing, depressing, and richly romantic. Unlike the book, which is more of a mystery and leaves a lot of things unexplained. Here we go. Now the book reads as a series of journal entries and written correspondence between characters, starting with Jonathan Harker on his way to meet with Dracula in his home in Romania to represent his interests in buying up land in England. And while in his company, he looks like this and stays that way throughout the entire story, even while Jonathan happens upon him crawling up the exterior on the castle, as though the laws of physics don't apply to him, but some of the costume designs in the movie make me wonder. This armor makes me think of cooked lobster. And this look, just no. Finally, this movie came just too soon after Bill and Ted's excellent adventure for me to look at Keanu Reeves here and not be reminded to be excellent to each other. Anyway, there's also no backstory in the book that provides any rhyme or reason as to why Dracula is a vampire. He just is. While he did fight in a war, he didn't do it for any religious cause and he didn't lose a wife to suicide, prompting him to forsake that cause. Also, only in the book, he sees Lucy and Mina as prey. He does not see his long lost princess in Mina and there is no love lost between the two. And speaking of Mina and Lucy, they are best friends in the book and the movie. But in the book, they are both as proper and innocent as young ladies in the Victorian era London were. And in the movie, they're more of a yin and yang. Mina being the innocent and proper yin and Lucy being the secretly scandalous yang. And speaking of Lucy, what happens to her is the same from book to movie. She begins to mysteriously lose blood and walk in her sleep before she dies, and then has to be killed again when she reanimates as a vampire. Other small differences include that Jonathan was not kept as vampire food for the brides before he escaped the castle. He just escaped after Dracula left for England. There was also no consumption of baby's blood in the book. Now, as stated before, there was no romantic connection between Dracula and Mina. She hated him for killing Lucy, and she was just prey to him. He forced her to drink his blood, which affected her, as demonstrated by the injury done to her when Van Helsing comes at her with a communion wafer. And now let's also not forget the bug-eating, food-chain-obsessed nutcase Renfield. The movie does very well to theatricize this guy's antics, but in the book there is no described cause of it. In the movie, he is Jonathan's predecessor. It was Dracula who made him the nutcase, and Renfield is Jonathan's dire warning of what he will be if 
he doesn't separate his interests from Dracula. Finally, the ending is even different. The only thing they have in common is that Dracula dies, with a stab to the heart and a snip to the neck. In the book, Jonathan and Quincy are the heroes of this piece. In the book, it ends on a sad note with Mina putting him out of his misery. And that is almost all for Bram Stoker's Dracula. But I still want to confront one remaining elephant in the room. And by elephant in the room, I mean this farce, Van Helsing. And the only reason I'm going there is because it, it includes characters created by Bram Stoker, Dracula and Van Helsing. Assuming that these are the same guy, and this is a prequel, that Van Helsing was a monster hunter before he was a doctor, which is how he knew what was wrong with Lucy and Mina. But in this story, he and Dracula have been enemies for a good long time, and now Dracula and his ladies are trying to raise a family, and they need Frankenstein's monster as like a battery to reanimate their undead bat babies, of which they can gestate hundreds at a time, in spite of being dead, which means that cellular mitosis is not happening. And besides all that, the nearby villagers are definitely not on the same page on whether or not they're on they're at peace with the vampires picking off one or two of their own every month for sustenance. It's badly written and makes no sense, but it's good for action and special effects. So that covers Bram Stoker's Dracula and to a lesser extent Van Helsing. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment and smash the like button. And I'll see you next week for The Shining.